You're listening to episode number 64 of the Alleria Masterclass Podcast. What's going on, everybody? It's Brian Tripp. I'm here in beautiful Birmingham, Alabama. So excited you decided to join us today for another episode of the Masterclass Podcast. We are Alabama's only real estate podcast. We love to talk about Alabama real estate. Every once in a while, though, we get some national guests on that can talk about just real estate in general. So we're going to do that today in just one second. Just want to make a couple of announcements. Our RIA meetings are always the second Thursday of every single month. You definitely need to check those out. That's where you're going to get tons and tons of great content from us for very, very cheap. If you're brand new, if you've never been, you actually get to come for free um, to the first one. So definitely check that out. Second Thursday night of every month right here in Birmingham, we meet at the Embassy Suites Hotel in Homewood and get started around six o'clock. So definitely check that out. You can uh, learn more at alaria.com or you can go to our meetup page, meetup.com slash alaria, it's A L A. R-E-I-A. We always do workshops as well. Every, every quarter, every three months, we do our, our workshops. We just had one in March. And we got earlier in March, and we got one coming up in June. So you can go and register for that right now if you'd like to. And you can go to alariaworkshop.com. It's A L A R E I A workshop.com. So let's go ahead and jump right into the episode. I have the one and the only Mr. Tom Kroll with me today. How are you doing, Tom? Bam! Let's do it, brother. I'm excited. It is a great, great day today. Tom, you crack me up, man. Where does all this energy come from? I'm just curious. Coffee, brother. Coffee. No. Oh yes. Some no, of it's I'll, natural. I'll tell you what it is. I was, uh, I was, uh, I was down and depressed and fearful and riding a lawnmower to make money, and then I found real estate. My brother pulled me in, kicking and screaming the whole time, and I'm telling you, brother. It is. That's what it is. I can't believe this is the greatest business in the world. I love real estate, or I love parts of it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with the houses, but the rest of it, it's awesome from a business standpoint. I love real estate, but when you start actually getting to the houses and the land and stuff like that, I don't like that. Yeah, part no, of no, it. no, no. That part's not for me. <laughs> that, that's so funny. That's so. Funny. I actually want to talk about that. So tell us your story, Tom. I mean, tell us that story. Like, what what are you talking about? You were you were in lawn care, making a living, and then you tell us how you got into real estate. Yeah, just barely. I mean, brother, it was crazy. So I, uh, I was, uh, I was, I had a regular job. I, I uh, went to college and I got kicked out, and uh, I had to get a job right away. Um, Julie, who you met, uh, Julie, who you met in Orlando, my wife. Uh, we had our little blessing, Logan, a little prematurely. And, uh, so I had to get, I had to go right out to the work world force and, uh, started working for people. I got fired from literally every job. I've never had a job that I had not gotten fired from. It's, uh, just one after another. And, uh, I needed to make money. So uh, I was going through a bankruptcy and I just started cutting lawns and uh, that was a nightmare. I do not have the Florida body type to be riding. Like, you know how you see like the guys in those movies, like they take their shirt off. It's like that. That's not me. <laughs> that is not me. So I was riding low. I was miserable bankruptcy. And um, then I got fired from my lawn care job. And, uh, yeah, like they were like, you stink. And I'm like, yeah, I know. So, um, my brother, I call my brother Todd Toback. He is my, uh, he's my stepbrother. Some people wonder why we have different last names, but I called Todd and, and he said, you know, get into wholesaling. And I, I said, no, wholesaling's not, it won't work out here. You live in San Diego. I live in tiny Port St. Lucie. You know, there's not enough houses and they're, there's not, they're not expensive enough. And he was like, stop being such a blankety blank, blanky blank. <laughs> and uh, he said, just do it. So I did it. I made my first deal, Dorothy Cannon on Oroso Boulevard. My first deal, it was awesome. I, I made 2000, I actually lost 2000 because I spent 4000 in total made a mistake on my first mailing and you know the whole story everybody has and uh that's where i learned all the lessons of how to do this you know progress not perfection massive and perfect action uh, instruction over education education is the number one reason why most people fail in real estate um is misplaced education so uh, i just started doing it and then i just did deal after deal after deal after deal and i loved it and my assignments went from like 2000 to much, much higher now. And, uh, as I'm speaking to you last month, um, last month I did $141,000 in assignments, never saw a house, never met a seller, never met anybody. Uh, I was on vacation most of the month and, uh, it was awesome. So I love it. It's the, gr I think that real estate wholesaling specifically, which is to me, 
a lot of people, they have different definitions of wholesaling. To me, wholesaling is very simple. It has one definition. It is the art of consistently finding discounted properties. That's it. Wow. I don't really care you know, what your exit strategy is, whether it's rehabbing, landlording, cherry picking deals for rentals, or uh, you know, there's all kinds of weird things like you know, all these acronyms like lease purchase options, LPOs, right? And um, I don't really care what the exit strategy is. If you can consistently find discounted real estate, you will be a millionaire. That's the bottom line. Um, that's why when I said before about real estate, I don't believe that our business has anything to do with real estate. It's really more closely associated with a pawn shop than totally. with real estate. Yeah, one hundred percent marketing. Yeah, and I think that that's interesting. I used to say that all the time. I used to watch um, the the Pawn Star show. Yes, exactly. I used to watch that and learn how they. This is before I even got into real estate and learn how they kind of haggle. It's the same thing, isn't it? Exactly the same thing, 100%. The secret is knowing how to, you don't have to be a good salesperson in wholesaling or in real estate. You have to be a know you have to be a person who knows how to listen, and you have to know how to negotiate. You don't have to be good at sales because you want to be a deal finder, not a deal creator. If, if you look at the most successful real estate investors in the country. Um, and you and I are blessed to know a lot of them. They are deal finders. They are not busy getting frustrated trying to create deals. Those are the people who have – they left their job or got fired from their job to create a job in real estate. I'd rather own a business that is a servant to me. The number one principle for doing that is, number one, understanding that um, you have to – have ways for deals to find you rather than trying to create them. And number two is you have to be, uh, you have to be decent at negotiating, but you have to understand the value. And this is so funny. If you ask a lot of new wholesalers, you know, they just regurgitate a lot of the same sayings, right? Uh, I pay all cash. I buy as is. I close fast, but they don't really know what that means, right? Why is that important to the seller, right? Everyone knows if you take the Rolex to eBay and wait 10 days, you'll make more money than if you go into a pawn shop. Why is that person going into the pawn shop? They're not dumb. It's not like people are saying, oh, you know, like it's not like they don't know that that they're selling quickly totally. and sacrificing price. So, so you have to understand what value you bring to the seller. But but that's really the key. That's what it, the nuts and bolts of the basic core of, of wholesaling. Totally. Tom, you're, you're already giving some fire this morning. I am. I love. Well, you know, how could you? I mean, you know, I just went away for I went away for, for three days for a cruise. My wife and I, we just got back this week. And while I was gone, I made fifty one thousand. This is not even the money I made. Like, on, I mean, I made 50, no, fifty three thousand dollars in assignments. And, and 20 percent of that I give to my acquisition manager. But I mean, it's this is I like people spend money on a franchise. They spend like three hundred thousand dollars on a franchise and then they work all week yep. and then they still only make like eighty thousand a hundred twenty thousand dollars a year i mean it's this is the, real estate i don't know what else to say <laughs> i mean it's there's so much evidence it's like it's so obvious i don't know why every this is the perfect business no inventory no big upfront costs no special licenses i mean i love it brother I love it. So uh, before we, because uh, you you've given a lot of instruction already, and I want to I want to talk. Are, are you okay if we give some good real estate instruction on how to get going and how to get started Absolutely. and stuff like that? I want to get Absolutely. to that if, if you don't mind doing that. But I really want to I want to kind of follow up with what you said in the beginning about you know kind of where you were down and out, kind of depressed and all this stuff, getting fired from multiple jobs. Right. How does there, because there's probably somebody out there listening right now that might be thinking and feeling the same exact thing. And you're saying, sitting here, we'll just do real estate. Well, does happy happiness doesn't come from just making money? Absolutely correct. So, what is it in particular that gave you the joy and the happiness and the fire that you have right now? Because it's not just making money. What is it? So. I love that question because as you can see behind me, all these books, a lot of them are from Ryan Holiday and uh, Viktor Frankl I just read, which is Man's Search for Meaning. And uh, really what it comes down to is your why. And I know everyone's like tuning out right now because they're like, I'm so sick and hearing about this whole why. But let's just break it down so it's super, super simple, right? A why um, what you find a lot of people doing is they the, the first mistake that they make 
because it all comes down to your why, right? Uh, the first mistake they make is they adopt somebody else's why, right? Mm-hmm. So you ask them a question and then they'll give you like a canned answer about what drives another person. Or the the my favorite one is they'll give you some like like really like humanitarian why. Like the 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 reason I do this is to like like I want to open a nonprofit hospital for children, right? Now here's the thing. I think that that's great if that's really your why, but here's how you know what your why is, yeah. right? This is how you know. If your why gets your butt out of bed at five o'clock in the morning consistently, wow. that's your why. So if you are up at five o'clock because you want to open a non-for-profit children's hospital, great. But if your why is you get out of bed because you want a Lamborghini, go get the Lamborghini. There's no reason – like this is not like a, a like a judgment of how you get into heaven kind of test of what your why is. Whatever your drive is, don't be ashamed of it. Embrace it and go yeah. for it. W- one thing I always say to my students when they – you know, if you take my top – 100, 200 students, the people who are consistently crushing it, they have a clear why every single time. So, and so a lot Tom, of them, go ahead. I, I don't mean to, I don't mean to interrupt you, but how does so? So the big question is, so how does one? Because that's hard. That's a hard question to answer. How do right. we answer that question? Well, I think that first of all, you've got it. You've. I always tell my students, you have got to implement an artificial why, right? So you'll hear a lot of times what I what I used to say, which is a little like a little rough and not really PC and a little kind of brutal, but um, I'll just tell you since it's just you and I on the phone here. Yeah. Um, so so here's what I'll tell you. Um, what I used to tell my students when they were struggling is, and you'll see like, you know, they're in that comfort zone of education and learning and preparation, but they're never taking action. They're never going out and getting out of their comfort zone. I used to say, okay, close your eyes. I want you to picture that I am driving a van and I've got your kids in the back of the van. I just kidnapped from the park and I'm driving away. And I call you up and I say that in order to get your kids back, the ransom is you've got to get a house under contract today. And here's the reality. You are made in the image of God. You can move a mountain, but only when you stop trying to manage time and you manage priorities. If you really believed that somebody had your children, God forbid, and they were driving away, and that ransom was something that you didn't have, like even let's just say $100,000 and you don't have it, I guarantee you that I could teach you 100 ways to make $100,000 quickly, but as soon as I have your kids, you'll have that $100,000 ready for me in a check within 24 hours, right? Why is that? Because as soon as you have the right why, your priorities all line up. All of your distractions are completely gone. You'll go to You'll wake up at 3 o'clock. You'll go to bed at 11. You'll skip breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But you notice when somebody's in education, preparation, and learning mode, it's like, oh, I sit, you know, I'll sit here and I'll have a sandwich. And you know, I don't want to talk to that lady who has the Century 21 badge on and find out if she could be a cash buyer because it's embarrassing. But hey, guess what? When I have your kids in a van, you're going to go talk to the lady in Century, at Century 21 who's sitting next to you at Starbucks. And I think that's totally. what it comes down to. Tom, that's awesome stuff. So we find our why. We find the reason why we're, we we can get up every morning and do this business. We want to make money. We want to support our family. Whatever our why ends up being, whatever's going to get us out, up out of bed. Right. Let's talk about instruction because you, yes. you gave us a little bit of stuff there in the beginning about wholesaling. And, and if you are wholesaling, you know, I love what you said. It's the art of finding discounted properties. That's right. awesome. I I, t- I say it like you're a marketer and you're out there to find great pro- great deals. You're not a real estate investor if you're a wholesaler. You're a Absolutely. marketer. And right. so let's talk about some instructions. Say I'm brand new. Tom, you convinced me. I, I, I want to get started into real estate. I want to get started wholesaling. Step one, first thing I should do. Okay, so I'm going to give you the step one, but I just want to highlight what you just said about okay. instruction because yeah. all great coaches understand that the way that I learned and the way your best students learn and my best students learn, learn is you remove the comfort of education. In, in, um, we what don't, does that mean in particular though? Really define yeah, that. Let's talk about that. Here's the number one cancer of why most – people fail in anything is that they're in preparation mode and they're in, you know, they have this word just like before I find a deal, before I speak to a seller, before I find a cash buyer, I just have to do this. I just have to learn. I have to listen to a podcast. I have to listen to get a book. I have to, the reality is you have everything inside of you that you need right now. All you need is the proper instruction. So what instruction does is it replaces education. So the way it should work is instruction, action, education and you get your education from the results that you get if you look at all the greatest men and women throughout history in america in europe in asia everywhere it's always been instruction 
Action, results, education. If you look at all the people who fail, all the people who are struggling to get started, all the people who can't seem to find their first deal, or they'll, you'll go to a real meeting and they say, oh man, I've been learning and learning and learning for years and it's just time to get started. They're always in education mode. It's always that warm blanket of they feel like they're progressing. So I think it's really important to just highlight it that- is. But but I guess where I'm confused, or, or maybe some other people are confused, is what is the actual difference between instruction and education? It's exactly like Mr. Miyagi and Daniel Sun, right? If you've seen the original Karate Kid. The new one, I don't know, not so good. But the old one, a lot of great lessons, right? In Mr. Miyagi and Daniel Sun, it's very simple. Paint the fence. Which fence? That fence. How do I paint it? Like this, up and down. What paint do I use? That paint. Great. You don't have to – Mr. Miyagi didn't spend a ton of time explaining why he was painting the fence. He didn't go into the, the chemical composition of the paint. He just went and told him and gave instruction. Danielson went and did that instruction. And then when it got time to go into the dojo and fight whatever his name was, he won the, the fight, right? The reason is because he was – Taking instruction, taking action on the instruction, getting a result, and then tweaking the result. Remember, Mr. Miyagi said, no, 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 not like this, not like this, like this. Wax on, wax off. It's all about getting out of your own way mm -hmm. because as entrepreneurs, right, we're creative, we're visionaries. We we fly at 50,000 feet. We go to our idea, idea. But when you have a mentor or somebody that you're taking, like I did with my brother, you're taking the instruction. You're out of your own way. Nobody gives a rat's behind what you think of the postcard or what you think of the script. My brother wasn't there to make me feel good or teach me about real estate. He said, if you want the results I have, I'm a millionaire. If you want to be a millionaire, do what I tell you to do. Get out of your own way. Yep. And that really, when you can let go of that, it's such a burden off your shoulders. Yeah. So I think it's the you know education to action like learning on your own and then taking action and then getting more, it's no good. It's instruction, action, results, education. So the way I, I – because I, I, I want to know because I, I teach and, and I love teaching real estate and, and I think – I agree with everything you're saying though. But with everything you're saying, I love to teach step by step. Right. I love to teach step one, step two, step three, step four. I feel like that is instruction. It is. It, I totally agree. So, so the, like, I'll give, so you asked me like, what is Tom? Like, you What's know, I'm just getting one? started. What's step one? So I will tell you what our step one is. Um, what our step one is, is the number one thing we do. The first thing we do is we have what we call like a welcome call. We prepare our students for battle, right? So a lot of times I think when you get started, when you, Tony Robbins teaches us, right? A decision is made in an instant. Mm -hmm. And when you make that decision that you are going to go forward and you are now done learning and you're going to go get a deal, right? You're done learning and now it's time to take some gritty, scrappy action and let's just go get a deal. When that switch goes off in your brain, the first thing that should be done is somebody needs to prepare you for what's to come. When you first hear about real estate, everybody tells you, oh, you know, I make I'm a millionaire. I make so much money. Everything's so great. My family's great. My life is great. The vacations are great. The temperature's great. Like everything's great, great, great. But nobody remembers, right, when you like look like a total idiot in front of sellers and buyers because you didn't know what the heck you were talking about. So I think the first thing is a lot of people when they come in there, they have all that you know energy and excitement about real estate. Somebody needs to tell them, hey, listen, it's going to be hard. We talk about doubt, distraction, um, doubt and distraction and um, doubt, distraction and uh, disappointment are the first three D's that we want to prepare them for. So we put them in a suit of armor that says, hey, these things are going to come. You are going to look like an idiot when you don't know what you're talking about. And, you know, and you, we're just telling you to do these things. So that's you have to be prepared for what's coming because it's not going to be easy. You are going to look like an idiot. You're going to feel foolish. But who cares? Uh, number two is the first actual step that we do is um, we have all of our students practice the script, and we have them do that by collecting cash buyers on Craigslist. Um, this is the funniest step because it really is like a line in the sand because a lot of people don't like to make phone calls, totally. right? Totally. And uh, the other thing it does is um, – but who it really affects the most, most people when they hit rock bottom and they make the decision, they just do what you tell them to do, which I love, right? So I always tell people like you know, a lot of coaches will say, well, save up a certain amount of money and then quit. I'm like, no, no. Go get fired. Go quit your job. Get a severance pay. Do whatever you got to do. Let's just do this. Let's just make it happen. Yeah. I'd rather see you like do it and fail or rather than death by a thousand needles. So – um, what's really funny is those the people who come into our course, the 20% who already you know know how to do deals, mm -hmm. um, they never want to submit to that first step of practicing the wow. script because they're like, oh, I already know this, right? But here is the biggest takeaway of why you should always, when you are under a mentor, 
follow the steps. And why step one is practicing the script? Because all of these fancy words that people use automation, delegation, systems, scaling, a business that serves you rather than a job that you serve. It all lives in step one. It all lives in step two. If you can be a robot and go through the steps, Mm -hmm. then you can hire a 24-year-old McDonald's worker to do it for you. You don't have to hire the five-star chef because you've become a real estate expert. So I think when it comes to the steps is it's not vitally important how you divide out your course. But what's more important is that the person says, I, I, in order to success, have success, we always say there's three belief systems. Mm -hmm. The student has to have number one, faith and belief uh, in you as a mentor, right? That you have their best, you have their best um, for them, that you're rooting for them, that that you can be trusted. The second thing that is absolutely required is that they believe the system works in wholesaling. It's that they actually believe that people do sell their homes for 40 and 50 and 60 cents on the dollar. And then the third belief system is that that they believe in themselves, that they are worthy. A lot of people have a lot of caps on what they think they can do. They think other people can do it, but not them. Or they think that more for you means less for me and that kind of a thing. So if they have those three belief systems and they come into a course and they submit to it and they follow it and get a result, all everything that these guys behind me on this bookshelf talk about, Vern Harnish from Scaling Up, Michael Singer from uh, The E-Myth, um, Traction, Gino Wickman, all it really comes down to is delegating those steps to other people, mm-hmm. which are easy to do when you don't become an expert. When you start learning, and instead of following steps, you start learning real estate and becoming a five-star chef, the restaurant is only open – if you're working on Christmas, the restaurant's only open when you're working all the time. But if you can come in and follow steps that then a 24 year old can follow right behind you once you've mastered them, who cares about real estate? People say, well, I love real estate. I love real estate. So it's my hobby. So I never work a day in my life. I don't know what that means. My hobby is not real estate. <laughs> if I have free time, I have five kids. I build terrariums. I have a pool. I want to go to the beach. I have a vacation home. I don't want to do real estate. I don't like nobody. Like it's so silly. Like this, you know, whole idea. Like oh, I want to like you know put granite countertops and like new <laughs> chandeliers. Like <laughs> like I could barely hang a necklace holder for my wife at this point. So it's. I think that once you have that realization that uh, these are the steps. And I have to follow them so that somebody could come behind me and follow them so I can have a business that is a servant to me. Totally. That is the key. And that's why the steps are important. But it's really more important, you know, when you're under – like if I came – you know, if a student come in, came into your program mm-hmm. under your tutelage, right. they have to trust you. They totally. have to trust themselves and they have to trust the, the program. That's, those are the three keys. 100%. So, Tom, let's, let's talk about what – and you've actually already alluded to this a little bit, but what – is it about like like give me a couple of things that a couple of mistakes that people make you know because I think the education versus instruction obviously that's an important point but that is not necessarily on the person um, as much as it may be on the mentor or on the teacher right. so much. What are some mistakes that you see people making to why they are not successful in this business and how can they overcome those? Yeah, I mean I think that uh, the first mistake is they uh, the first mistake is a very obvious one that a lot of people don't pick up on. Uh, the first mistake is that, and there's a few of them, but I'll kind of put them in priority order. The first mistake that I see that people make is they they dip their toe in the water of multiple pools. Oh, and yeah. I think, yeah, so what you have to do is when it comes to everything in life, you know, poor people will always say, be well-rounded, right? They'll say things like, don't put all your eggs in one basket, right? When you meet with wealthy people, right, you get the exact opposite advice. If you know something works, go all in, yep. right? Um, it put all your eggs in one basket, right? Total opposite advice. I think that the thing is, is you can't dip your toe in one, one pool. You have to pick a lane and then stay in that lane and not be distracted. So for instance, if you want to see this as absolute proof, go to a RIA meeting, and talk to the people who are struggling and say, well, how are you finding your deals? And the people who are struggling will always give you the same answer. They'll say, well, um, and you know, don't do this to beat anybody up, but just kind of pay attention to like how life unfolds in front of you. Um, but they'll say, well, I do, you know, I sent out a few postcards. I uh, spoke to a few agents. I made some calls on Craigslist and I put out a couple bandit signs. Then talk to somebody who's doing, you know, say 50 K plus per month and say, well, what are you doing? And you'll get the same answer every single time. They have picked one marketing channel, one approach, they went all in, and they 
found out how to make it work. They measured the numbers. They did bandit signs or they just did Facebook or they just did PPC or they just did direct mail. They went all in. They dominated that marketing channel until it was up and running and totally automated, meaning that it's producing the same amount of leads every week without their involvement. And then they moved to the next channel if they moved to the next channel at all. Right. right. So I think this is true in every stage of real estate investing is that the people who fail, they pull multiple pearls of wisdom from like multiple quote unquote experts. Yep. They go mul multiple, like they're always in this mode of trying to find some secret that doesn't exist. The secret is there is no secret. So I think that's number one is don't dip your toe in the water. Go all in, face your fear, do some fear setting exercises. Tim Ferriss has a great video on YouTube about that. And go all in on one channel, one in set of instructions, one market, one area, and yep. totally dominate it and automate it so that somebody else can run that process for you. Uh, that's number one, I think. Depth versus width. And that's what I, I talk about it all the time. Go deep. If you go wide, you're spreading out all your resources very, very thin, and you're never going to be great at any of them. 100%. Yep. That's awesome. I totally agree. What, that's, number yeah, number two. Number two would be, uh, and this is a big one, is uh, new students who fail are very often, uh, they have two emotions that they can't seem to shake. One is the assumption and the other is anticipation. So um, they do this as it, it's really – this is done – in a way of like self-preservation um, because it doesn't require taking a lot of risks. So here's what I mean. Um, when it comes assum assumption is the problem, they are assuming what is going to happen based on the action that they're taking now. So for instance, you'll have a conversation with one and you'll say, well, this was a deal. Why didn't you put the house under contract? Well, you know, I did, I didn't, I, I knew that if I told the seller that I only wanted to pay 50,000 for the house, that they were going to say A, B, C, and D. Right. So they're always assuming everything. They spend so much of our, this energy that we have is, 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 is limited. And when so much of it is spent on the anxiety of assuming all of these different scenarios, and usually it's the worst case scenario and a catastrophe that they catastrophize every scenario. Totally. Uh, totally. That's a big problem. The other one is uh, it's assumption and then uh, it's assuming and then also anticipation. Anticipation, you always can tell when a new student is in anticipation mode. So they'll say, they'll be on step one, build your cash buyer list. Before you mail any more motivated sellers, I want that cash buyer list to be 150 people. That is it. If you're a brand new rhino, 150 is like you still have the placenta on you from being born, right? Like I want 150 cash buyers no matter what. And then they'll start asking questions like, okay, well, what happens if I put a house under contract and then the seller decides that they – and this is before they even have cash price. They haven't even mailed, right? So they're asking questions like on step 10 when they still haven't even completed step two. Um, I think that's another reason why a lot of people fail is a lot of their time, energy, resources, money, and attention goes towards assumption and anticipation. Um, so that's that's another Totally. That's a yeah. No, that's some awesome stuff. I feel I feel very privileged, and I know you have a podcast too that w we can talk about. But when I get to interview these incredible guests from not only in my local area but all across the country, like I get I get like little personal seminars that, that get taught to me. It's awesome. I love it. <laughs> so, Tom, why I've seen a lot of videos of you do, you know doing certain things, and you're always standing up. Yes, my favorite thing is everybody who sees me, like in Orlando. Because the camera is higher than the my camera is higher, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm always like that. <laughs> but um, everyone's like, "Man, you're so tall!" And I'm like, "Man, I must look like three foot four on the uh, on the video." Because like exactly. literally, exactly. Every single, yeah, I, I like to stand up because, man, I actually, I have a treadmill desk right next to me that I'm not on, but I mean, it's on the stand, but uh, yeah, brother, I, I don't know. I don't like to, when I sit down, I always tell my account, like if I see, like I have only have one acquisition manager right now, which I love. I have, my whole company is run by like one and a half people and um, yeah, it's awesome. And, um, and um, I see, you know, if I, I, when I used to see some of my older acquisition managers, they would be sitting down when I say older, meaning they worked with me previously Um I would pull the chair right out from under them because as soon as they sit down there, they, they slunch over and they're like, um, hey, I, if I can pay all cash and close immediately, what would be the best price? And I'm like, stand up. Get up right now. Where's that smile? So I think when you stand up, you just naturally have more energy. You project your voice. So if you're an acquisition manager, if you're a real estate investor, when you're on the phone, stand up. Don't wow. sit down. Yeah, you could sit when you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a pacer. I, pay, I put my headphones in. I just pace. Brother. 
I literally, I had a lady, I was, I, let me just tell you, this is so funny. There was a lady who, I live in a gated community, so I went up to the clubhouse one day and I was on the phone and I was sitting in an empty room and I was walking in a circle. So later on that week, she goes, you are, when you talk, you pace. And I'm like, do I? And she says, let me show you the video. And she sped it up and she's going, <laughs> that is so awesome. It was so funny. She's like, what are you doing the walking the whole time? I'm like, hey, that's, I, that's how I am, man. I'm the I, same way. I had a guy in my office and he was waiting for me to get off the phone. I was talking to Joe McCall and, um, uh, and I'm like, I'm just, I'm literally like pacing. Like he's like right there and I'm just pacing behind him the whole time. And he's like, dude, you are like making me nervous. Bro. People tell me that all we're exactly alike then because I'm telling you, I do that constantly. I, everyone makes fun of me. Oh yeah. He's the guy who walks and talks. I go around the neighborhood and do it. It's, uh, <laughs> that's awesome. it's good, man. So Tom, I want to ask you about this too, because, um, one of the, the, actually the way I've found out about you was um, about a year or so ago when I saw you on Bigger Pockets, on the yes. Bigger Pockets, um, on the YouTube video of your podcast, okay. and you're standing right. up and you're in between the the two hosts. Do you feel like that? Because I, when I go and look at all the Bigger Pockets um, YouTube videos, I and I'm not saying I'm saying it's the most um, watched one, but it has got so many views. What did, what did that do for you, if anything, like being on that show? Well, you know, I think that, um, you know, first of all, Brandon and Josh are awesome. They're funny. Josh asked me if I was on drugs because I have so much energy, which I thought was pretty good. Um, it's, it was an awesome show. And you read the comments like everyone's like, this is the best one ever. Tom is bam! incredible because <laughs> like, you have so much energy and you gave away so much incredible, valuable information there, which you've already done here too. just talk about what that did that do anything for you, like from a national perspective or, or talk about what that podcast yeah. did. So I think, well, first of all, I think the secret to, um, I think the secret to, um, you know, where we are and where we're going and where we've been is that, um, a lot of times people fall into this category where, um, they, it's, it's a weird, I was having a, I, I have a mentor that, a lot of people on this podcast listening will know, and, and you know who he is, but I'm not going to say his name just in case I don't want to misquote him here or say something that I don't know if he wants me to share. But um, I will just tell you that you know he said sometimes the thing about when you start to have a success um, and you make money is there's actually more anxiety around keeping your money than there was when you didn't have money and you were trying to make it. Um, so I think that what happens is a lot of people take their information and they start to like build a wall around it. And I have found, I learned this from another mentor of mine. His name was um, Jeff Walker from, um, um, from uh, what do you call it? He has a book out called Launch and it, it, he's a great guy. And, you know, he taught me something, which is there is no free line. There is no free line. So if I can share one thing with your listeners, it is that um, – I'm telling you, Brian, it's like when you have something that is good, you in this life, you only get to keep what you give away. And I am telling you, this scarcity mindset that so many people have this, instead of having this abundance mindset, they think there's like there's like a puddle and they have a thimble. The reality is, is that you are created in the image of God. You, there is so much abundance that when you start to understand the way this universe works and you know the rules, you just step into the flow of everything. So yes. it's so true. And I think that – so getting back to your question about the bigger podcast and – what we do is to have these podcasts that have so many listens is we give it all away. One of my favorite rhinos that you met in Orlando is Martine Jackson because, you know, she was like – she came in ultimately to the tribe as a student. But she said to me, Tom, when she came in, she did five deals just by listening to the podcast. So my wow. – yeah, my my uh, my theory is there is no free line. Give it all away, and then when you have students, you know you take good care of your students, and you 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 know I mean we really you know go above and beyond. We want to we we are totally our obligation is to make sure our students are successful. I mean that's how I feel. Um, so we go above and beyond, but just give it all the way. Don't there's there's no benefit to holding. You know if you find a new list that works, if you find a new postcard that works, if you find you know this new whatever, um, share it. The, I guarantee you. The more you share, the more you tithe, the more you do the right thing and you don't have a scarcity mindset, the more success you experience. And this is not a Tom Kroll original. This is like everything I have is just regurgitating from all these books that I read. Totally. And they all have the same message. 
on this topic. They do. Um, and then and I'm a part of your little book club, so I've been reading reading along with you since January and the first book you guys started with was The Go-Giver. Go-Giver. And I uh-huh. actually I'd never read I heard about it, but I'd never read it. And you always say you need to read, physically read, and yes. I'm personally I, I you might be 100% right. I can't do it. I don't want to do it. I don't have time for it. We all say, you know, time is whatever we, you know, prioritize. I have not prioritized it, I should say. But I, I'm driving around so much. I listen to so many podcasts. I listen to, so I listen to that book. I was actually, I was actually on the plane to go down to Orlando and back. Right. Um, to, to go to the wholesaling conference. Listen to that book. Awesome book. I'm 100% a believer in, I already was, 100% a believer in everything that that book talks about. Tom, where did you first learn not only just learn that mindset about the abundance abundance versus scarcity wh- when did you actually decide why i guess why did you actually decide to put it into practice before you actually maybe ever knew that it would even work i i know the exact answer and instant and the moment that this happened um because it's was very profound in my life um the book was called the four spiritual laws of prosperity by edwin Gaines, which i am now friends with her and i have a signed copy which is true for many of the authors i read which i can't believe you met scott alexander in uh orlando um i i i will tell you exactly what happened i went to um i was totally totally broke and just starting out and um I my whole life I was always in scarcity mindset. I grew up in you know a household where it was just like you know hey you know you gotta you know money ideas were a little bit different. Um, so I was totally broke. My brother said, "Hey, we're on this adventure of wholesaling. I want to go with you to Atlanta. There was a Sean Terry conference, and he said I will pay for everything, and uh, you just come along." And I did. And Todd paid for everything. And I went, I met there, I met Blaze uh, there and Nestor, um, uh, uh, Nazar rather, I'm sorry, uh, Nazar uh, and a lot of people that I still am friends with now, which is awesome. And um, when I was there, one of the first thing that Sean was talking about was first of all, your why, which I was like, oh, rolling my eyes because I didn't understand at the time how important it was. And then the other thing he was talking about was this book um, called The Four Spiritual Laws. So what I did was I said, um, I said, okay, I said, um, um, that's great, but how do I just do learn wholesaling? That's what I'm most interested in. And over the course of a two-day period, three people told me to read the four spiritual laws. Um, it was this guy, Lewis, and then it was two other people, and uh, they told me to read it. And I will tell you right now that I – had made a decision that I was going to be in instruction mode and get out of my own way and not like, I don't care what I think my opinion was of the instruction that successful people were telling me. I was just going to do what they told me, yes. which is such a great paradigm shift. I mean, my goodness, but, um, and I started tithing. Um, it's one of the rules in the four spiritual laws of prosperity is you start to tithe. And I was always a Christian and I always kind of knew like I had to tithe, but I never like I would give like ten dollars or twenty dollars and then like wonder like, oh, what kind of car is the pastor driving? Like, do I need to, you know what I mean? <laughs> like so right, silly. Yeah. But um, but I will tell you, I attribute the majority of my success to tithing. If you are on the fence about this, I would say that read that book because it I you can do everything that I tell you to do and none of it can work. Except for this one thing. This is the one thing that in yeah. Malachi, it, the Bible teaches us, you tithe and the floodgates will open. Absolutely. And it, it has for me and so many of our students – I mean literally, Brian, I've lost count of how many people write me notes. I, you can't see them here, but they're on the one of my walls. I have notes of people who just say, I tithed and this amazing check popped in the mail and – that's 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 where I'm at with that. Tom, I love the fact that you're not afraid to say stuff like that. So I went down to Tom. Tom has Wholesaling Inc., which we're going to talk about all that here in a minute. Um, Tom has Wholesaling Inc., and they did a real estate or a wholesaling summit in Orlando um, back in January. And very, very fortunate to be able to go down there and learn from some of the absolute top wholesalers in the country. But you got up on day one. And gave the initial keynote address um, to 150 people or so that were in the room, and there was there was one theme that I took away. I don't know what your actual theme was, but the theme that I heard you say over and over, and that I took away from it was like you're tithing. Like you kept right. talking about tithing over and over. And you know what was really interesting is that, I, and I didn't get to experience the entire conference, which you know why. <laughs> but right. um, but 
every single person I listened to, which was probably half of them, they all mentioned that word. Right. And then I got up, and again, very thankful, very fortunate to, to get to talk there. I got up, and I didn't even pl- – I don't have that word in my talk. That right. word is not in anywhere, anything that I t- ever talk about. And it just it came out of my mouth. I don't know if it's a spiritual thing. I don't know if it's a God Bam. thing. The word came out of my mouth because I do it, and I do believe that that is one of the absolute keys to my success is tithing. I just think that it's interesting that you're not scared to talk about that. Do you mind just sharing a little bit about like why you decided to? Obviously, it's true, but why you actually decided to talk about it and bring it up? Yeah. So you know, it's it's. Um, I will tell you exactly why. Because my approach has been to get out of my own way again, right? So what I did was as a coach, I started doing all of the fancy stuff when I first started that coaches do, right? Like all these like little strategies and funnels and, and, um, and then um, my students initially weren't having success. I, I made a few mistakes. Like one thing that we did is we weren't drip feeding the course out. So everyone, like people would go through the whole entire course in three days. Like they'd be just binge watch the whole course and they'd be like, hey, I didn't get a deal yet. Um, so what I did was I had some conversations with my mentors and people that I learned from uh, Todd Toback and other people. And um, and one of the thing is, uh, well, a few of the people, one of them was the guy you were just talking about, my buddy Joe McCall and your buddy, he was a great guy. And what they kept getting back to is um, what worked for you. And then I really went back and I listened to this 90 Days Do or Die series that I did with Todd, and I really listened to what worked for me. And it was really just a step-by-step plan, and one of them was tithing. And it was like one of the first ones. And that's when – you know, I had done a few deals, but I still wasn't really making money. Nothing was sticking, and it was like a roller coaster. As soon as I started doing the tithing, that's when I just got clarity, and I just said, I have to share this. You know, if you if you are rooting for your students, you have to give them everything. And I know it's a little bit of a touchy subject. I've gotten some kickback. My, you know, there are people who've you know said, oh, you know, you hide behind that, and um, or they don't, they're not comfortable with it. And I understand that. But if you read the book, um. Uh, what's her name? Edwin Edwin Gaines. She's very clear about where to tithe. She says wherever you get your spiritual food. So, That's right. you know, so we specifically have uh, have endorsed her because it's really kind of like non denominational. Um, it really goes across the board, whether you're you know from from all uh, from all walks. But yeah, I mean, I just decided to share it because it works, and I really do attribute. I know that if I was not tithing. Um, I have a feeling, you know, I have a feeling I would still be in a bad spot because, because otherwise you don't understand the way money works and you're chasing money and you're chasing the wrong rabbit. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it makes it, it makes you be a good steward of your money because you have to know what 10% means. And I will tell you, everybody says, oh, numbers, numbers, numbers. I know my numbers. Nobody knows their numbers. I'm telling you right now, like 1% of people know their numbers, literally if that and when you tithe, it really forces you to know your numbers because 10% of what? What does it mean? You know, what is 10% of what number? Well, you have to know, but you'd be surprised how many people don't know numbers. And when totally. you start to tithe, I think it makes you a better steward of the blessings that you're receiving. That's awesome, man. That's so awesome. So, such great stuff. Tom, before we go, I, I do want, I want to talk, touch on one more subject because I, I think, um, I think the, that this is critical to success is networking. And you've name dropped coaches and mentors, or you've talked about you. You have personally have coaches and mentors. Just the power of networking. What does it mean, and how do you do it successfully? So I have really spent a lot of time on this subject. I've really have deep dived it. And uh, Brian, I mean, it's an honor to know you. I mean, everywhere I go, I tend to find these people that are like just plugged in, and they come at exactly the right time. And I'll tell you exactly, like next month. I am going literally to go see Robert Kiyosaki. I just went out to lunch with him. I got invited to his house, and now we're going to go do, be a, on a book club. And what? It's a, yeah, there's like only a handful of people there, and we're going over uh, – we have a few books he sent me. Uh, Big Potential is one of them, the ho- ho- Hollow Sync uh, program. Um, there's a book by Kevin O'Leary called Family, Kids, and Money. And then there was another book called um, by Ryan Holiday called um, – the obstacle is the way, which is amazing. 
amazing. Wow. If anybody has not listened to that, or I've listened to that one, I didn't read it, but I'm going to read it. Uh, the Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday is absolutely the, my top five books. Um, but how did that happen? First of all, um, I will tell you reading is so key to networking. Um, I went uh, I, I went to lunch with um, Clayton Morris and Robert Kiyosaki, and what came up was the subjects of books. And it happened to be that he was talking about Michael Singer's book called The Surrender Experiment, which is another phenomenal book. And it turned out that that was one of his favorite books. And we started talking about it. And he said, you know, Tom – Robert said, you should come to our next book club. We have a handful of people. I mean, the name, wow. uh, the names of these people on this list would absolutely blow your mind. I mean, unbelievable. I mean, these people are like the top, right? And he said, you should come. So I think having, when you, what is the point of all this? When you do what Jim Rohn says, right? The five people you want to be like is who, is who you are. Right. Um, when you start to do what they do, they notice that and they invite you in. That's number one. Number two is you have to have a servant's mentality for networking. Everybody's always bent inwards, right? How did I meet Robert Kiyosaki? I met him through Clayton Morris. How did I meet Clayton Morris? Clayton Morris was, he's another massive guy, right? Fox News broadcaster, number one show on the globe, uh, Fox and Friends. He contacted me and said, Tom, I want to learn how to do real estate. I said, Clayton, Done. I will teach you. He went on to become a multimillionaire in in real estate. Um, you know, when he first came in, he said, "I just want to do five thousand a month." I made it my mission to make sure that he did fifty thousand a month, and he did. And now he does way, way, way more than that. But that is the key: is you have to have a servant's mentality. And one thing I learned from Michael Singer is um, if you if you stop having preferences. And you just let life unfold of you and you look for opportunities to serve, your networking becomes very, very simple. Yeah. When you just – when you you know, it's like that song. It's row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. And it, what that means is row, 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 which means work hard but gently, right? Downstream, not against the stream, right? And just watch as life unfolds. You, it's so much easier when you know the rules of life. Networking is just a money net. Your network, all of these things are just symptoms of what you are doing or not doing. And that's where tithing and reading and all this other stuff comes in. And I agree with you with reading. Although I will say, if it's really a struggle, just eight pages a day, brother. Come on. You Eight do pages it. a day. So I teach us. I teach us. If if you just get a book and you get like, if I show you any of my books here, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a book. Hold on for one Come second. On. Let me show you a book. No, All let's right. do it. I know what Tom's about to do. By the way, he's about to because he's he's shown me this before, and he goes in and he teaches people how to read, and not that you need to know, learn how to read, but he teaches you how to read effectively. Tom, take it away. All right, brother. So this is so easy. If you look at any of the books on this counter, on, on this bookshelf, and there's hundreds, and I've read almost all of them. Um, he, by the way, I'm a guy, just so everybody knows, I got a 990 on my SAT, and I had not read a book except for Dr. Doolittle in junior high. I had not read a book until I was 33. So I, if I can do it, you can do Because everybody says the same thing, right? You can't read a book. I get distracted. I get tired. I lose my place. I lose focus. It's all BS that you've just been fed. The devil's a liar. Don't believe it. So here's the deal. Here is the book, The Big Potential. This is the one that Robert Kiyosaki, we're going to be reviewing uh, next month. So if you look at any of my books, I can tell you right now is you just flip through the pages and you will see – let's see if I could find one. So here is a tab. So that tab right there, what I do is you just take any book. You count out. I do 10 pages, but if you're start starting, do eight pages. And literally, you just count one, two, three, four, five – Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's the tab right there you on the tenth page. But you didn't get much accomplished in that first day. I got this much accomplished right here. But but that there's nothing on those pages. Oh no no look look I have one two three four pages right there of reading. So here's the thing for that day one it was super super simple reading right. So some days you're gonna have like here's my advice don't look at what's on the page if there are pictures like in Viktor Frankl's book one of my weeks it was like all photos right. But um, what I would suggest is just read what is in front of you. I would start with eight pages and don't look at the page number. Count the actual physical pages. If you can start just reading that in a day I am telling you this is not and you know like, which is better audible or reading. 
do both. Um, I love Audible. I listen to the obstacles the way on Audible. But you have to read because it it's, it builds different connections in your brain. It's yeah. a different muscle. It does. Um, it does for sure. And I mean, all wealthy people read. I've never, ever, ever have. I, I'm I'm so blessed to know some of the wealthiest people in the country. I've never met one ever who says he does. Everyone, rich people talk about books like poor people talk about movies. I am telling you. I'm going to say that again so all your listeners hear it. Rich people talk about books the way poor people talk about movies. So I'm telling you, you, you know somebody who knows a lot about movies? They're always poor. You know somebody who knows a lot of books? They're always wealthy. So – um, what you do is you just read, and then when you're done for that day, you just stop on that day, no matter what. If you have an urge to read more, get a second book and read less. But start with eight pages, and um, you know, start with books that are interesting. And then what I always do is I highlight, you know, where. I mean, but this is it. And when you and let me give you more advice on this too. When you first start reading books, you are going to have all of those things come up that that your teachers told you. Oh, you have attention deficit disorder. It's not about at first. It's not about understanding what you're reading. Even if you don't know the vocabulary, even if your mind wanders, just be disciplined to read those eight pages and read every word. And don't ma- it doesn't matter if you drift off the whole time. Just read it. As you read every single day and you make it a habit, all of a sudden you'll have time for it. You'll understand what you're reading. You'll start taking key takeaways. And again, this is not an argument of over Audible. Listen to Audible also, but you've got to, got to, got to read books. It's, it's such a common like – you know. It's so funny when you see wealthy people doing it, you what other evidence do you need besides that? Like it's like you know what I'm saying? Like it's like yeah, totally. I wanna be I wanna be rich, I wanna be rich. Okay, every rich person reads, Oh, I can't read. <laughs> it's like okay. Like, and I don't wanna like I know there are some people who legitimately cannot read. Um, you know, they have a you know, a serious learning disability or you know, there's other but if you can read, if you're able to read, um, read. Because it's – and I, I mean this for our listeners, Brian. I'm not – what do you call it? Uh, for sure. But it's Tom, key. Tom, golden, golden information, Mr. Tom Kroll. I, I want am. you to talk about some of the things that you're doing right now. How can people um, listen to what you're up to, watch what you're up to? You mentioned a coaching program, all these different things. How can people kind of get in touch with what you're doing? Yeah, so so uh, wholesaling Inc. Wholesaling Inc. is the podcast. It's the company. Um, check us out. There's a ton of uh, free resources. There's more on the podcast. A lot of people like the podcast because we, we really give everything away on the podcast. Um, but I would say if you're just getting started, um, it's, if you're in Alabama, I mean, I know Brian personally. He came out and saved our butt in Orlando. He's underplaying what he did out there. He was more than a guest. He spoke, and we needed him. He was like our pitch hitter, pinch hitter, whatever. I don't know sports that well but he was the guy who came in and saved the game touchdown home run hole in one whatever you want to call it but it's um we had uh, a little hiccup with some of our speakers canceling at the last second and uh brian came in and offered a delivered uh delivered an awesome speech but the key is if you're just starting get out of your own way yes pick a mentor brian is phenomenal he's local in alabama and then get out of your own way don't have any opinion about what he tells you to do. Just do what he tells you to do. Don't skip ahead. Do what he tells you to do, and then you will have results. Either way, you're either going to fail or succeed, but you're going to get off the fence. You're going to you're going to either succeed. You all result. There is no success or failure. There's only results. Brian will get your results. So the key is is that if you want to get into this game, you have to pick somebody who has is already at the destination that you want to get to. Mm-hmm. Avoid all people who are not at the destination that you. You want to get to i'm going to say that again avoid all the people who are not at the destination that you want to get to because those people not because they hate you but because they love you are going to try to keep you in that other spot right so avoid those people hang out with brian pester him find out where he lives knock on his door go bother him at five o'clock in the morning and say don't we're do doing that. It. yeah no i know don't do that <laughs> but, but you got to be persistent because yeah. the bottom line is if is that if if someone had your children in a van and the ransom was to do a deal you would move a mountain so let's move a mountain today shut this podcast off and go and make it happen today pick somebody to follow and go and just take action the more results you get, the one true statement I can tell you for sure is whoever gets the most results wins. Whoever gets the most results will eventually find success. All the, You can go to Edison and all these people, the most results. Get the most results. Take action. The education comes from the results. It does not come from the books and the podcasts and the, and the seminars and the, all of this other stuff. It comes from – taking instruction from this podcast or any podcast and then going and taking action reward yourself with education as you have results don't don't put it before as a preliminary totally but uh 
Yeah, that would, yeah. So if anybody wants to check it out, the podcast is Wholesaling Inc. And they're happy to, uh, yeah, ch- check it out. Definitely check it out. You have to. He's giving away, which we try to too, but probably not at the level Tom's doing, giving away incredible, valuable information. You heard him say it earlier. Um, what was the lady's name that did five deals just by listening to the podcast? Martin Jackson. Wow. Oh, that's one awesome. of my favorite rhinos. I love Martin Jackson. That's awesome. Love, and if you want to find out what a rhino is and you want to find out everything that Tom is up, up to, you have a, you have a Facebook group too, right? Can they- uh, we do. Yeah, it's called – it's under Investor Grit. Investor G-R-I-T. Definitely um, get um, um, get uh, like linked up to that because they, Tom is in there almost every – you're in there every day posting something. I'm, yeah, absolutely. We love it. As a matter of fact, I just spoke to Ann. She's one of our – she's our director of good news and we have 5,000 <laughs> Facebook friends. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you have to have a director of good news if you don't have one. Director That's – the director of good news. Yeah, because when you get – we our goal is to have the most testimonials in real estate coaching uh, by the end of the year uh, to have the most uh, the most testimonials of any other, other coaching program so um, in order to do that when somebody you know we used to get phone calls all the time oh I just made a million dollars I just made five hundred thousand I just made forty thousand it's like I just did my first deal in six weeks I'm like get a testimonial like, <laughs> like come on guys that's so key but um so so now we have Ann but she was just telling me we we're gonna start a second Facebook group I don't are you at your five thousand person limit on Facebook how does that work because no, I don't know not Facebook groups I feel like groups no, no. can be not groups. I meant a private page, like your per, your personal page. Do you My have personal a personal page? Um, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not cool like you. I don't have five thousand friends on Facebook. I'm sure you do. You just. I'm talking about. Them. I'm talking about the group page though. The investor yes. grit group page. You don't have a limit on that, do you? No, no. That's that's that one. Investor grit doesn't have a limit. But I was thinking for my personal page, I have students who want to get a hold of me, and um, they can't get. I, I'm like full on my. I don't right. know. I, I got to, but, that's, I need to but that's not where all the great. I mean, I'm not saying your your personal page isn't all the great stuff. <laughs> Come on, that's the pictures of the kids, man. <laughs> investor grit, <laughs> but investor grit. You want to get going in this business? You want to learn from one of the absolute best, Tom Kroll. Um, uh, go uh, link up and join that investor grit um page because I Tom's awesome. posting there every single day. It's incredible stuff. Tom, thank you. Delivering fire, man. I am, bro. We got to ring the victory bell. Hold on, here we no, go. No, 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 no. <laughs> Tom, I, got, I was about to interrupt you, man. I'm going to cut that out. Look what I got. All right. Tom gave me a victory bell. We're ringing it, baby, in Birmingham, Alabama. I don't have it hung up yet, but we're, I get, love it. we're getting there. That's a sexy bell, man. Very cool. <laughs> I, am, I am privileged to know you, privileged that you came on our show. And guys, on and I don't have the date, June 14th. I got to look it up. Hold on. Oh, I got, yes. I, I got to look, look it up. up. Oh, Before we go, somewhere. it's the second Thursday in June. Guys, put it on your calendar right now. You cannot afford to miss this. June the 14th, 6 p.m. at the Embassy Suites Hotel in Homewood, Alabama. The one and only Tom Kroll is going to be in Birmingham. You heard all this fire. You heard all this energy. You heard all everything that he gave away. Um, he's coming here just uh, uh, to, obviously, as a personal favor to me, coming to just share with you guys anything and everything you want to know about wholesaling, real estate investing. Very excited to have you, Tom. Yes, bring a pen and paper because I go really fast and we're given all content. There's no fluff, no BS. So be ready to take action that night. We're going to give you a specific instruction, the best lists, all of it. So be ready to take action right out of the gate. I'm, I'm, this is going to be so exciting. I'm so excited you're going to be here and, uh, and we'll see you in June. And thank you guys so much for listening for another incredible episode of the Masterclass Podcast. I say it every time. Go hit that subscribe button. Like us, rate us, and review us. We love you so much. We'll see you next time.